Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Wednesday afternoon. Hope the day's going well and whatever it is you're up to, I know most of you aren't working and if you're working, you're lying. Um, hope it's going to be a good one though and we're talking Jean-Claire Tadebo mostly today. Um, we've got some really potentially exciting news around the Jean-Claire Tadebo pursuit. So potentially having open talks already on Jean-Claire Tadebo. As well as um, some peculiar comments from Radu Draguzin's agent. So plenty to talk about, plenty to get into. And I'm going to start with the Jean-Claire Didibo news. It came from Tom Barkley, who said that talks have already begun between Tottenham Hotspur and Nice over the possible signing of in-demand central defender Jean-Claire Didibo, who is valued in the 30 million plus bracket. I'd say 30 to 40, somewhere in there, right? That's... That's really exciting news. Obviously, we have already we I think we can kind of sense Spurs have spoken to his agents because that's what normally happens. You speak to the agent and say, look, would he be keen to come to us? Because there's no point speaking to the club if the player's just not keen. There's, you know, you're wasting your own time. So yeah, Didibo has obviously signed off on the fact that yeah, and yeah, I probably wouldn't mind going to Spurs. You know, then it's like, right, now it's between the clubs. Obviously, the sticking factor within all of this is obviously Ratcliffe, who's then becoming the minority owner of Manchester United. Some point, I, you know, I listened to the United sound, Mark Goldberg, just try, trying to work out when it is. It's close, but I, again, when, I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's a sticking point because obviously you're going to want to sell potentially your best player at Nice to a top four rival. Money talks so, and if the agent has already sort of gone to um, gone to the higher ups at Nice and said, "Look, he wants to go. He wants to go to Spurs. We've agreed a contract, sort of thing. You know, let's can we get, can we get this thing sorted?" You sort of lose a little bit of power in that situation. So that's really exciting that we have actually open talks with Nice. It does make me feel like, and I don't think personal terms will be an issue. I really don't. He's not going to be on enough for it to become an issue. He's probably on, I'd say, somewhere between thirty and forty thousand, maybe twenty to forty thousand. Because again, it's league gun. They don't pay massive wages in league gun unless you're old school Monaco or PSG currently. So he's probably on somewhere between, let's say, call it twenty to fifty, somewhere in there, right? If you double it, it's a hundred grand a week, which for Spurs is feasible. He's probably going to be about 80 to 90 grand, I'd say, somewhere in there if he came to Spurs. So personal terms won't be an issue. I think playtime won't be an issue. I think this is the other thing that people need to kind of settle down on. And, and, and if it is you, then I'm speaking to you directly. Why would you have two good centre-halves and then two backups? Backups, you know. They're, they're, they're definitely the backups. No top team in the world has backups, no top team. Why is it we have this idea that we've got Van der Ven and Romero? Backups. Backups over there. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're the backups. No, you want four cent halves that can compete week in, week out one another to play as many games as possible. The fact Van der Ven picks up a big hamstring injury twice in the last two years. Romero gets obviously suspended. He also does pick up an injury or two. That's why we need four cent halves. So if you, if you have this idea, why would he come to us to be a backup? Please remember. Those two don't play every single time that we play. Also, next season, if we have European football and we're playing two or three times a week, are you expecting uh, Van der Ven and Romero to be playing three times a week every single week without any suspensions or injuries? Hell, Tadebo might come in and be better than both of them. There's also that idea. Remember, think smarter on that one. Let's talk a little bit more on Jungle Tadebo. And it came, <clears throat> and this comes from various reports through Team Talk. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to sort of waste my time talking about who the sources are. I've already spoken about them in the last few days. But yeah, they, they <clears throat> team talk, they say Tottenham confident of Tadebo signing. Tottenham have held further talk, round of talks with the agent of Jean-Claire Tadebo and are growing optimistic they can beat Manchester United, the Nice defenders, 40 million or 34.6 million signature. Call it 35. Um... Manchester United have financial fair play issues. Like I said, I was watching the United stand and I was sort of trying to get an idea as to what their January looks like because I like to kind of understand what other teams are doing as well as us. They have financial fair play issues. They do. There's a reason why they couldn't get Amrabat on a permanent this summer. It wasn't because they wanted a loan deal and to see what he could do. No, they couldn't afford to pay what Fiorentina wanted. They'd, they'd wasted money on Mount. They'd wasted money on Anana. You know, well, not wasted. Anana at least plays. Mount doesn't play. They they spent what seventy odd million on 
on Hoyland. You know, there's a reason they, they were reaching to get Regulon at the end of the window because they needed other players and they didn't have the money for it. So they're not going to have the money now in January unless they sell people. And that's the thing. They're hoping and praying that Saudi will come and take a Casemiro or take a Varane, a Sancho, a Martial. Whereas we can kind of come in and go, we'll have to do that, thanks. Here's some money. Bosh, off you go. See what I mean? You know, we have the step ahead. The agent, the agent's not going to care that the that the uh, Ratcliffe's going to Man United. He doesn't care. The agent wants a good move for his client, but also wants a quick move because obviously he gets money out of that move. He doesn't care that Ratcliffe's going to United. Now, would that open up Man United door a little bit more? Maybe, but they're also not going to wait around to the twenty eighth of January to get a deal sorted when they could have a deal sorted on the fifth of January of Spurs. Knowing the moves already sorted, he can forget about his client then, basically, for the next six months to, you know, however long to a new contract or a sale. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm i quite confident to both signing as well. And that is infamous words. Let's just quickly finish off with the quotes from Florin Manea, who is the Ragu Draguzin's agent. He has played a blinder of a window. So I talked yesterday about he signed a new deal to 2028. He's denied it. He said, there are many rumours, a lot of articles that appear. There is currently no concrete black and white written offer. We are no rush to leave. Radu de Gruzin has a contract until the summer of 2026. For now, we're in, we, for now, we are evaluating. We're not making a decision now related to the extension of the contract with Genoa. I think that the statement of the official from Genoa is taken wrongly. There is no extension agreement. If we sign the extension, we will only do it for one more year until 2027. We're in no rush to make the decision and we will see what happens in the chance window. If an important offer comes, we will consider it. He's playing a blinder and he is absolutely using every single club under the sun to get his client the best possible offer from Genoa. It's smart. I rate it. I think he has signed a contract and I think he's now sort of going out there going, look, I'm going to say we haven't. Don't don't come out and say anything. Just, just yeah, try and manipulate the market a bit more drum up more news around his client. Because if he does, client does well, the summer comes along, do you know, I might get a bit more money. They might earn a bit more on the wages front, bigger signing on fee, bigger agent fee, blah, 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 blah. Smart. I rate it. I rate the dedication. But yeah, I think he has signed that contract. And I think that's a dead rubber move when it comes to this window. Hey guys, this is the end of the video. Hope you did enjoy. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section your thoughts and feelings about those Radu Jagruzin's comments, uh, agent's comments, but also the news that we've talked to Nice about a Jean-Claire Didibo move, as well as more talks with his agent. Excited like me? I hope you are. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, at the end of the video, I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.